Tesla Semi arrives at Giga Texas. April 5, 2022. It looks fans will be able to get an up-close look at the Tesla Semi at the Giga Texas Cyber Rodeo later this week. Early on Monday morning a white Tesla Semi was spotted arriving at the factory. In images captured during a drone flyover of the factory by Joe Techmeyer at Joe Techmeyer. The electric Semi was outfitted with what at first appeared to be a new black roof above the cab. As good as it looks. That was unfortunately not the case as we can also see the typical white roof being taken off a nearby semi-trailer and being brought over to be installed. This now confirms that at least the semi will be on display at the Cyber Rodeo. But what other vehicles could Tesla bring to the party? Like previous events. It is almost a guarantee that the Roadster will get an invitation. But most importantly, given the name of the event, it would be very surprising if the Cybertruck doesn't make an appearance too. Maybe we will even see the final production version unveiled. Stay tuned to Drive Tesla follow us on Twitter as we'll be at the event and we'll bring you all the latest. Check back later today as we will add Techmeyer's drone flyover video when it is published to YouTube. Source reposted and summarized from Darren John at Drive Tesla Canada. My take I wish I could NE there. Elon. Where's my invite? Elon Musk takes 9.2% stake in Twitter. April 5, 2022. Twitter stock is soaring on Monday's pre-market after news broke that Tesla CEO Elon Musk had taken a substantial stake in the company. Musk's stake was revealed by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission in a 13G filing released on Monday. As per the SEC filing, Musk now owns 73,486,938 shares of common Twitter stock, which represents 9.2% of the social media platform's common stock. The Tesla CEO's stake in the company is worth $2.89 billion. At least based on Twitter's closing price on Friday. With his purchase, Musk has now become Twitter's single largest shareholder. Musk's purchase of Twitter stock has been received very positively by investors of the social media platform. On Monday's pre-market, Twitter shares surged over 25% following news of the CEO's stock purchase. Interestingly enough, Musk has posted some stern criticism of Twitter less than two weeks ago. During the time, the CEO posted a poll asking users of the social media platform if they believe Twitter adheres to the principles of free speech. The poll ended with 70.4% of over 2 million respondents stating that they do not think Twitter adheres to the principles of free speech. Musk explained then that the consequence of his poll would be important. And he also inquired if a new platform was needed. This incited speculations that the Tesla CEO was looking into establishing a new social media platform. Ultimately, however, Wedbush analyst Dan Ives noted on Monday that Musk's 9.2% stake in Twitter could lead to a potential buyout. Musk could try to take a more aggressive stance here on Twitter. This eventually could lead to some sort of buyout. This makes sense given what Musk has at least been talking about. At least from a social media perspective. Ives said, Musk is arguably one of Twitter's most prolific users. With over 80 million followers, the Tesla CEO has essentially built his company's online presence through his tweets. Tesla, for example, does not rely on traditional advertisements. But Musk's frequent presence on the social media platform has allowed the electric vehicle maker to become one of the market's most well-known electric car makers. The same is true for SpaceX which has helped rekindle the excitement of space exploration among the social media generation. Source reposted and summarized from Simon Alvarez at Tesla RT. My take I guess it makes sense that this is step one in Elon taking over Twitter. Elon Musk reveals Tesla supercharger profit. April 5, 2022. The supercharger network is considered to be Tesla's biggest advantage in the E-fifth world. Currently. Tesla has over 30,000 stalls at more than 2,500 locations. And unlike most other charging networks, the Tesla superchargers are located along major highways and designed from the get-go for long-distance travel. On top of this, since Tesla controls both the vehicles and charges, Tesla owners can plan their trip, including the necessary charging stops, in a seamless manner right from the center screen of their vehicle. Tesla also automatically reroutes owners to lesser used supercharger locations if there is congestion. And to put the icing on top, Tesla automatically preconditions vehicles before a supercharging session to improve charging speed by as much as 25%. This has made Tesla's really convenient for long-distance travel. Currently, 
Tesla is on the third generation of superchargers. With the latest iteration achieving speeds as much as 250 kilowatts or 200 miles in just 15 minutes. Most analysts covering the EV space consider the supercharger network to be Tesla's biggest moat. Some even go so far as to claim the expansive charging network is the number one reason for Tesla's success. In accordance with Musk's promise, Tesla has currently opened the supercharger network as a pilot program for non Tesla E. Versus in the Netherlands, France, Norway, Germany, and Belgium. And as the pilot program expands, analysts have been trying to predict how much profit Tesla can make by opening its supercharger network to other auto OEMs. One such analyst, Ross Gerber, who is the county founder, president, and CEO of Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management, just put forward this exact question to Musk. In his tweet, Ross wrote trying to model out the supercharger network value. It seems you work a 50% gross margin on the energy cost. Is this across the network or it varies by location? In his response Musk wrote we aim for 30% GM, gross margin, or approximately 10% profitability. All costs included. Source reposted and summarized from Tinsai Aragay at Talk News. My take the supercharger network is pretty good. I assume that they will take that profit and expand it like crazy. Biden official shares insights after meeting with Elon Musk in Giga, Texas. April 5, 2022. Last month, United States Labor Secretary Marty Walsh paid a visit to Gigafactory Texas to speak with Tesla CEO Elon Musk. The official's visit to Giga Texas was quite surprising considering the Biden administration's reported reservations about the CEO. Reports of the visit simply mentioned that Musk and Walsh talked for over an hour, covering topics such as inflation, innovation, and job creation. Since then, very few details of the official's visit to the Texas-based electric vehicle factory were shared. That is, at least, until recently, when Walsh was asked about his conversation with Musk during an interview. While speaking with Yahoo! Finance, Walsh was asked whether Musk was really serious about the idea of Tesla adopting a unionized workforce. The Labor Secretary noted that while he and Musk did not talk about unionization much, the Tesla CEO did state that if the company's workers would like to unionize, then he would love to have those conversations. I didn't go too much into the unionization of his plants. We talked more high level about the economy. I was asking him some questions. I was asking about inflation and supply chain and all the manufacturing and what he sees in his factories. So we talked about all those issues. We had a good conversation. And hopefully, we're gonna have another one at some point soon just to continue the dialogue. Walsh said. Walsh also shared some thoughts on Tesla's Gigafactory Texas, which he noted was extremely impressive. However, the Labor Secretary admitted that he was actually most interested in Elon Musk's work with Neuralink which has the potential to help people with diseases such as multiple sclerosis. The idea of developing solutions that can help people recover from life-altering injuries is, according to the Labor Secretary, something that truly interested him. I'll tell you he's built an amazing facility there. 10 million square feet. It's one of the biggest buildings I've seen and it's challenging building. He built it on basically a landfill. So we talked about that. You know, the culture of how he thinks about a company. So we just we touched a lot of different issues. I really focused on the medical side of his company as well. About what the research is on helping people that have been in accidents. Paraplegics and potentially MUS. And things like that. I was really interested to talk about what his company is doing. There's really some innovative things. And you know. I was really glad to talk about that. I know it's a little different from being the Secretary of Labor. But I got intrigued about it. Just really thinking about how we can help people recover their functions with their bodies after an injury after an accident. Walsh explained. Source reposted and summarized from Simon Alvarez at Tesla RT. My take the current administration needs to get past their issues with Tesla and treat Elon with the respect he deserves.